Reverse mortgages, are they a good thing, a bad thing? What's the scoop? I'm gonna to talk to an expert today. I'm gonna to talk to David Butler of Butler Home Loans. He is so experienced with this. I even learned a little bit and I thought I knew them at least a little bit better than it sounds like I do. <laughs> so stick around for this interview with David. I'm Annie, here we go. Hi, David. Thank you so much for being here. Why don't you start off just by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into reverse mortgages? Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for having me, Annie. I, I appreciate being here. So I'm David Butler of Butler Home Loans. Um, I've been in mortgages in the Bay Area for over 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, after 2008, I saw some changes in the market coming and um, my mother actually got a reverse mortgage and I saw what happened to her and her experience and I wanted it to be better for others and so about five years ago so I got involved in reverse mortgage myself and the company I'm involved with is uh, top seven in the nation in reverse mortgage so we do a lot of reverse mortgage. Oh very cool so your, your actual your mom had a bad experience? Well it wasn't it wasn't bad so much that she got what she wanted and she got it but I was surprised that the person that got it alone charged her so much money to get the loan. Oh. And uh, by the time I realized what was going on, it was kind of like at the end of the process, I didn't want to say anything to make my mom feel bad. So I, I didn't say anything at all. I just let it go through. But I thought, you know what, if, you know, I'm in mortgages and if I can do reverse mortgages, I don't want uh, to feel like, you know, these senior clients are getting raped, pillaged and plundered. And so I got into the business with the idea in mind that I could do a decent job without charging as much money. Oh my gosh, David, yay. I'm telling you, that's why I got into specializing with seniors too, because I have this fear. Thankfully, my parents are still alive and everything, but they live out of state. And I always think when they're going to need to downsize, like who's going to be there to help them? And so I so I love this, that you sort of have that personal experience too. Um, okay, basics here. What yes. are the requirements? Because clearly not everyone can just uh, sign up for a reverse mortgage. So what are the re basic requirements? So basic requirements is, uh, of course, you have to own your own home. You're going to have to have quite a bit of equity in that home. Um, it is only available for seniors. What does that mean? There's a couple of different kinds of loans, which we'll get into, but you have to be a minimum of 55 years old to get a reverse mortgage. And realistically, to get you all the options of a reverse mortgage, you have to be 62. Wow, so, that's actually really interesting. I always thought you, you could only be 62, but there you there's some leeway to 55. Yeah, there is a, there's a couple of different kinds of reverse mortgage. There's what they call a HECM. That's the one that most people are familiar with. It's an FHA product. It stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. That one you have to be 62. And, th and, and that's the one that most people get and most okay. people probably want. But for those people that have high value homes or want to get a reverse mortgage sooner, you can get a jumbo reverse mortgage and that goes down to an age of 55. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. So that kind of leads into my next question. Uh, what are some of the common usages for a reverse mortgage? Why are people getting them? And just by those two, it sounds like there's two kind of end games why someone would get one. The most basic, re the, the most common, not basic, the most common reason that people get a reverse mortgage is to pay off an existing mortgage. I mean, if they're 62 or 65 and they still owe two or $300,000 on their house, their mortgage payment not, might not be high. It may only be 1200 bucks a month. It may be $2,000 a month, something like that. But once you're retired and you're on a fixed income, especially if it's social security and you're drawing from your pension or, or drawing from 401k, you may not have as much money as you like. And if, you, if I can give you a raise of 1200 to $2,000 a month in income just by getting rid of your mortgage payment, that's a huge benefit for most people. And there's a lot of people a good percentage of people that that's all they need to help improve their position. Oh um, yeah. Um, the second most option, the second most favorite option is the Heckam has a line of credit associated with it. So it puts people in a position that they can draw equity out of their home if they want, when they want. So if they want to go on a long vacation, if they want to improve their home or maintain their home, you don't want your home falling down around you, you know? 
And so a line of credit can be a, a lifesaver as well. So those are the two main things. Okay. So what I have come across a little bit, um, and I wonder if you have it all, is people doing that kind of the heck I'm loan so that they could stay in their house, possibly pay for uh, in-home care. That yes. kind of thing too, that's possible, right? Because there's no restrictions on how they spend the money, a vacation or in-home care. Nobody cares, right? No, that's exactly right. And okay. you, so you can get access to your money. So that's the other thing that's kind of interesting, especially with the line of credit. So, I mean, we'll have to go into more detail maybe in another podcast, but there are so many interesting things that you can do with a reverse mortgage. But one is an instance that you talked about is if you get a home equity line of credit, that home equity line of credit can grow exponentially as you get older. So I did one for somebody the other day and we got them a home. They owned, it was a scenario where they owed zero money on their home. They took an initial draw of $100,000. Uh, they got about a $350,000 line of credit. So they still had $250,000 left. They were 65 years old. They didn't owe anything on their home. But the interesting part is that $250,000, if never used or if, if used sparingly, by the time they were 80, that $250,000 would have grown to $646,000 available to them because the line of credit continues to grow. The amount you can draw on continues to grow based on what you don't use. Holy cow. Yeah. And so it's a great tool for replacing long-term health care, like you said, or, or inviting somebody in and being able to pay for it so the family doesn't have to pay for it. So there's some really cool tools uh, reverse mortgage can put in your uh, possession. Okay, so there's ding, 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 the lights going on in my head right now because that is, I really, I never knew that. So that's really interesting. And um, I'm thinking about my own parents, you know, <laughs> don't tell them, but I mean, just because I don't want them to think they're getting old, but they are, you know, 80. They've owned their house outright for 20 years. Um, and, you know, they do have plenty of money if, if they did need long-term care, but it, I'm guessing it's kind of too late for them to do that, to have that extra, their equity grow even more in that, in that sense, that home line of credit. I mean, you probably should be doing that when you're 65, if your house well, is, you know. And you got it right. That's the, it's the interesting part is this growth factor. It grows based on the amount of interest you would be charged if you borrowed the money. So if the current interest rate is 6%, it's growing at 6% compounded. So, okay, so now this is like the best time to do it because interest rates are actually high, right? High and going higher. So it will grow faster if that's, if that's what you want. And again, it, it's the amount, the amount that's growing is the amount that's available to you. You don't have to take it if you never need it. Right. I mean, if, you don't, if you don't take it, you'll never, if you don't ever need it, you won't pay any money on it. So it's almost like an insurance policy. Totally. You know, and it's just what you said. If you're, if you said, well, I'll, I'll just wait until I'm 80 and get it then. Well, your 80 year old parents in the same, in the same scenario that I just went over mm -hmm. your 80 year old parents, instead of getting $646,000 being available to them, they'd only get about you know, the total amount available to them would only be about 450 because they they didn't, uh, you know, they're only getting what's available to them now. They're not getting any of that growth that they would have gotten if they had got it at a younger age. Yeah, so interesting. Well, it's good for me to know I'm 55, so I should get one soon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Going. Um, but, well, I'll wait till 62. But um, anyway, I love that. I really had no idea what if, fantastic tool for people um, just based on that growth factor. Um, I'm just going to ask one last quick question is, do you find when people come to you, they're really hesitant about getting a reverse mortgage? Because honestly, they kind of have a bad rap from years ago. I definitely think it's changing. And if you do hear people being hesitant, what's their biggest fear? I mean, I guess being taken advantage of, but no, no, that's oh, actually funny enough. That's really not their biggest fear. I mean, because I, I think most people feel that people are going to deal honestly with them. So I, I don't think being taken advantage of is a big concern. Mm -hmm. But the biggest fear I hear is I'm signing my house over to the bank, which is not at all true in, in any way, shape or form. When 
the mortgage will come due when they either move out of the home or when they pass away. Okay. Whoever is in, owns the home, right? Whoever the owners are, whether it be a couple or an individual. And at that time, the only money that the bank gets is the amount that was originally borrowed and any interest that is accrued during the time they had that money out. Okay. That's what gets back to the bank. So let's say you borrowed 100000 to begin with, and by the time you died, it grew to 200000 whether that's because of interest or because you drew, drew additional money out, whatever. If your home was worth $600,000, that extra $400,000 worth of value is going to go to your heirs or your children. Not only that, but your children, if they want, they can keep the house. All they have to do is go out and get a regular mortgage and pay off the existing loan. So the bank never owns your house. You own your house. You can sell it. Now, interestingly enough, on the flip side, you remember we talked about that equity line and it's a growth, mm -hmm. right? Let's say your home, let's say the equity line grows to the $646,000 that we talked about, but let's say 2008 happens again and the value of your home drops in the toilet. It's only worth $500,000. Well, as long as you take that money out before you die, you can take the whole $646,000 out. They can't ever take that away from you and they can't lower it. it oh my God. Once, once it's there, it's locked in. Okay, David, this is like a little secret out there. You know, <laughs> people are worried right now too about values dipping too much, a crash coming. And people are worried about interest rates being so high. In your situation, these are two actually good things <laughs> for <Yeah>. people. <laughs> so I want to go back to your question also, if I may. So the second thing most people are concerned about, and, and there's some truth to it, is cost. Okay especially when you get the line of credit that we've talked about or the HECM loan. The HECM loan, as I mentioned, is an FHA product, okay? Whenever you get an FHA loan, you have to pay FHA mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, FHA mortgage insurance for these reverse products is about 2% of the maximum claim amount, okay? The maximum claim amount depends on what your house is worth, okay? The maximum claim amount for any FHA loan is $970,000. Now in our area where we live in the San Jose area, there's almost no home that's not worth $1 million or more. Okay. So even though you only borrow $100,000, they're going to charge you 2% of the maximum claim amount or almost $20,000 just in the mortgage insurance. The rest of the cost associated with the loan is in line with what it would be if you refinanced or anything else. But that FHA um, money that we can't do anything about because it goes to FHA, that does make it a little bit more expensive. So you've got to look at it. It's a one-time thing, you know, as okay. far as that upfront cost. Okay. You've got to look at that and you just got to say, that's, that's just part of getting the mortgage. So that is another, you know, comment. But I do try to make sure that the clients know that right up front. I wouldn't want anybody to be surprised. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do think, you know, explaining it, you're doing an awesome job. So thank you. But explaining it up front like that, because I, I do think sometimes, you know, I've expressed this to you that I will meet, you know, regular mortgage you know, brokers that, you know, oh, sure, I can do a reverse mortgage, but they really don't know it that well. They say, oh, someone in my office specialized. So I'll, you know, I'll have them, you know, help me on it. But I think things like that could be missed. And then at the end, people can be surprised. And then it doesn't feel very good. Well, Even it's interesting. Overall, I, worked, I worked at one of those offices you're talking about where yeah. they, you know, the mortgage broker kind of started it and handed it to somebody. The problem with that is the people they hand it to they they do have the experience, but they don't have the relationship with the yeah. client. Yeah. And so because of that, the client tends to pay more money because they don't care as much about the client. So they charge them if, as much as the, uh, you know, as much as the government allows. Yeah, no, I totally hear you on that. So I'm super glad that we, well, I've known you now for a couple of years and stuff, but um, just kind of reconnecting. Hopefully we'll be doing some business together, working with some clients together, because to me, integrity is everything with my clients. So I just really appreciate you and your explanations were great. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and hopefully I'll have you on another time to do a little bit more deep dive in some of these topics. 
Well, I appreciate being here. And if there's anything I can do at all for you or your clients, please don't hesitate. Give me a call. And I'm big on questions. You know, somebody doesn't have to feel like because they're talking to me, they're hiring me. They can just talk to me and ask me questions. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Because even though I'm really in this business, everyone's small, I have that little brain cramp. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so I know if I can ask you and not feel too bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome, David. Well, have a great rest of your day. Again, David Butler, Butler Home Loans. And, uh, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, what a great interview. He had so much good information. I'm so excited. I definitely will be doing some more videos with him in the future because I think there's more to be learned. Uh, anyway, I'm Annie. I hope you got something out of today. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out directly to David, David Butler of Butler Home Loans or myself, Annie, and all our contact is below and we hope to help you. Okay, so until next time, have a great one.